Whoa, guys, I do gotta apologize for whoever had to buy a new like button after smashing it so hard seeing that. Don't worry, affiliate link in the description. <laughs> What's going on guys? Building Chaos here with another Satisfactory video. Yeah! And with the Steam release uh, vastly approaching, I thought we'd go over for all the new players and old every single thing you need to know about power. Not to mention my own little like power setups and what I would do around the world. So whether it's something as simple as a biomass burner, a little bit more complex with the coal generators, the vastly important fuel generators, or even the nuclear law power, <laughs> we're going to go over everything in this video. So sit back, enjoy, don't forget to smash your head against the table because you'll be trying to deal with all this. But anyway, let's begin with a fun video. Alright guys, the first thing you're going to need to know about is the biomass burner. Now the biomass burner, I know a lot of you know all about this, but for those new players out there, the biomass burner burns three different things. First off is leaves. They come in a stack of 500 and they burn at 0.5 a second if this is running at 100%. So like, let's say that you have this thing, you know, 30 megawatts of power being taken away, it's going to burn it at 0.5 a second which what that equates to is 120 leaves burnt a minute. So this stack of 500 will only last you about four minutes, you know, running at full power. On to the next one, where is if you take those leaves and process them, you can process what's called biomass. So whether it's uh, wood, whether it's leaves, whether it's, um, there's a couple alternate recipes that you can take and do those as well, but the best thing about this is now it burns one every six seconds. And the higher that number is, the better. That's so great. So basically at six seconds for a stack of 200, that means it burns 10 every minute. So 200 divided by 10, that's 20 minutes at full power that this thing will last. So you have to fill it even less, which is great. But the third and best one is if you process it even further, you can get what's called solid biofuel. Sorry, <laughs> solid biofuel. Now, solid biofuel lasts 15 seconds. So that means you only burn four every minute. So you can last almost an entire hour on one stack of solid biofuel if you're burning at 30 megawatts of power, which is pretty good. Now, considering a setup for this stuff, you know, nothing's really that great, but what I got going over here, I do like. So what I did was I put these things on the nice little, um, uh, what do we call them, uh, pillar tops and kind of put them on here because every one of these lovely uh, biomass burners fits up into a one foundation section. So that's how much it fits right there. And you can rotate it however you want which is really good because basically you get like another one, you know, one foundation section. It's not a lot of space and they're not that high either. So, you know, so I got this set up right here. Let me grab a couple of these and start powering this on. All right. Now, as you can see, it's powering on, it's starting to go up, up, up. This is 60 megawatts so far. And I am using 16 megawatts of power. Now that whole system is attached to these two things. So I have this one, which takes the leaves and makes biomass, and then the biomass into biofuel and gives me plenty of biofuel to keep going. And you know, it loads up pretty fast. The nice part about it is when these stop working, it uses less power, so these things last longer. So this is a really good setup, really nice and easy early game kind of stuff. Um, unfortunately, these like glass tops and you know foundation frames are more late game and everything like that, but you don't have to use everything that I use, but for the most part, a lot of this stuff is really easy to get out of the resource sink early on so you can make something like this or something similar. It's up to you and what you want to do. I just thought this was like a really cool, smart, uh, small setup and everything like that. And, you know, design-wise, it's not too bad. And it's pretty compact and all that kind of stuff and fun to do. But anyway, so now that the fuel... I don't know. So now that the biomass burners are out of the way, time to get to something a little bit more complex, and that is coal generator. They're so complex that they only take coal. 
Not true. They actually take three different things. We have ah. Now time for something a little bit more complex. So complex it even has a complex name. Coal generator. And you would think, oh, this baby only takes coal, am I right? <laughs> no, 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 no. Silly, silly little boy. Uh, what this actually does is it takes three different things, much like the biomass burners. Uh, the coal generators can either take coal, they can take a petroleum coke, or compact coal. And the difference between them is stuff like petroleum coke is coming out of the oil stuff for the refineries and everything. It actually produces pretty quickly, but it is the one that burns the quickest. So this thing burns at a lovely 2.4 seconds, which is 25 a minute. So at 75 megawatts of power, by the way, 75 megawatts of power, so much better than the lovely 30 you get from there. But you do have to run one of these little puppies, this water extractor, just so you know. And I have this at 150%, that's why it's got that 38.8. But normally, you know, it's loading, loading. Loading. Ooh, I should flush the pipe, that'll help. Did you know you could flush pipes? Wow, let's just do this one. All right, so normally this takes up an extra 20 megawatts of power. Where was that thing? So this will take 20 megawatts of power out of the nice 75, so you're only producing 55 megawatts of power. But the more you have, the less water extractors you have, the less power you're burning up. So it's not an even, you know, 20 megawatts of power taken out of each one. But the petroleum coke takes off the least amount, or uses the least amount, or goes the fastest. You know what I mean. You mean what I know. Anyway, so this burns the fastest, so you're burning about 25 a minute at a stack of 200, you know, pretty easy math right there. Now, in terms of regular coal, the namesake it's for, this actually takes for a second. Now, this is fun because that will basically be 15 every minute, okay? So when you're doing your load balancing, pretty easy because you'll have a belt of 60 and you'll be able to split it once and then split those again and you'll basically have four lines for every 60 line going in here. Pretty easy. So even if you start off pretty early, you'll still be able to run about four of these lovely bad boys. All right, but anyway, this burns for a second. So you're, you know, you're going through this about six and a half minutes for a stack of uh, coal. Not bad, not bad. But here's the big bad boy that you want. This is the compact coal. Now it burns 8.5 four seconds so it's like about a seven or something like that so this does last the longest although here's what you have to think about when you're making this to make compact coal you have to take a lovely let's go to our assembler right here okay you have to get the alternate recipe for compact coal there's only one and it basically takes 25 and 25 to make 25 so if you have a uh, good line of uh, coal and sulfur going into this bad boy and coming out the other end, that's pretty good. But just remember, every time you build one of these, that is an extra 15 megawatts of power being taken away. So is that extra 15 megawatts of power being killed from this worth going to compact coal when you can use regular coal and have two nodes of coal versus a node of coal and a node of sulfur? You know, as the later game gets on, you won't really need something like this. But, you know, it's something to note early on if you want to waste your time building something like that. All right, guys. So in terms of a quick little design, what I made over here was we have eight of these lovely coal generators on one side, eight on the other, hooked up together, got the pipes going down in the center. I did use these little, like, uh, what is it, quarter pipes and everything like that. So it actually goes in the bottom and then just comes up and then this splits off in the each and every one of them. Kind of in the middle, kind of nice. And then I have a three water setups over here. So basically it is three of these things for every eight that you do. But I did put some uh, nice little power slugs in these two. So this one produces 300, that one produces 300, and then this is just the standard 120. And that standard 120 basically gets split up and goes around the other side and comes over there. And that gives us all the water that we need. 
Now, granted, this is not the way to load balance this. Uh, this will kind of fail, but it is a good representation of something compact and cool that you can do if you wanted to. So we'll just connect this uh, lovely coal, let that go through here, let it separate and everything, and then we can see how much power and everything and why, why is this not working? What? That's weird. That is weird. I think there's something wrong with this, but I don't want to fix it right now. Anyway, it, it'll still work for what we're doing. So basically, this is all off the system. I ran the water first, just so we can see what it does. So this whole system, all right, as it powers up, you can see it just powering up little by little. All right. And we're getting up there. We're getting up there. Ha, ah, here we go. So it produces 1,200 megawatts of power. And at most, it's taken away probably like 200 megawatts of power uh, just for the water that's over there. So this is about 200 megawatts of power of these things right here. So let's see, we got this one that's taken away 86.6. Dang, 86.6 and ah, 20, yeah. So about 200 megawatts of power top. So we got 1,000 megawatts of power coming out of this free to use. Now, of course, that's not considering what it would take for a miner to start mining this stuff. And I'm only using compact coal as a uh, visual aid and not really as a representation of what I would do. Now, hold on a second. I want to show you a second one. All right, guys. Let's hook this baby up. Oh, shenanigans. Don't tell me it's not working. How does it have no power? All right, guys, so I decided to build a nice little thing over here where I took uh, 600 coal per minute. So a normal node at the max it possibly could go, you know, going around here, coming around town and seeing what I could build with this. I hate it. <laughs> uh kind of do but at the same time it's like the best of a bad situation so i came up with these cool ways of doing like the pipes and everything i do like how the pipes came out and each one of these is a nice uh 300 water per minute setup and separated and done all nicely going up and everything like that everything is running nice and smooth nice little compact load balancing system you know not the worst, but the best. Stop! Hold up, ladies and gentlemen. I had to stop what I was doing because I thought of a badass idea. Look at this. Oh. Now, unfortunately, when building, you can't build something like this because anything you build on top of it, it won't let it go up unless it's on top of this damn thing. So I decided to use Area Actions Mod and see if I could come up with something a little bit more friendly. And boy, did I ever. There's only one sad little problem with it. Is it won't let me build anything on here. No matter what. <laughs> so I can't hook it up to anything. But otherwise, come on, devs. Why can't this be a thing? Oh, my God. This looks amazing. See, if my power was like this, oh, I might actually use some of these damn things. But anyway, I just wanted to show this off because I was like, you know what? This is amazing. This would be so cool. And all you would need is I got eight 300 lines to take care of all the water needs for everything. It actually hooks up quite nicely on everything. It's just, oh, if only I could hook up everything. No. Like, I can't hook up any of this stuff right here. It's like, nope, nope, not a thing. Not going to happen. And if I delete any one of these, they go away forever. So I'm just going to leave this right here looking like this as a testament to well, how pissed off I'll be when I see this later. <laughs> oh, but to the next thing now. All right, ladies and gentlemen, now with the coal plants all done, taken care of, let's get to some fuel generators. Burr, 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 burr. Yeah. Now the fuel generators also burn three different items because apparently everything built burns three different items. I don't know why, but it's a thing. Uh, we have the liquid biofuel, 
the lovely turbo fuel, glowing red color, and of course, regular fuel. And all these can be made using water, oil, all that good stuff over there, over yonder. Uh, but the liquid biofuel actually burns at 12, um, what is it, cubic meters, meters cubed, millimeters, uh, millimeters uh, to the third. Uh, so this burns 12 millimeters to the third a minute. Whereas something like the regular fuel will burn 15 millimeters to the third every minute. So this actually burns more fuel than the lovely liquid biofuel. But the funny part about the liquid biofuel is it's in limited resources. So the trees and stuff like that, they don't grow back. So you can't really rely on this. Whereas with the regular fuel that's over here, if I can fly over there, <laughs> with the regular fuel, you can actually produce this infinitely from pulling some oil up off the ground. Now, as for the third one, the lovely turbo fuel. Turbo fuel burns at 4.5 millimeters to the third a minute, which means you, if you produce the same amount of all three of these, and let's say you're making 10 of those, you could probably make about maybe 12 of those, but then this regular turbo fuel will probably be about 20 of those because it's so much more powerful. Actually, you know what? If this would be 10, that's at 15, and this is at 4.5, you could probably actually do about uh, 32 of those, you know, because it's like three times as good. Now, to try and figure out a nice little setup, let's actually go over here and I'll show you the setup that I initially built when I first started this world back in the day, day, day. Ah, oh, it's been so long. Uh, this was when I first learned about uh, oil and all that stuff, and I was trying to figure it out. I even colored it and everything. Look at that snazzy coloring. Black and yellow, baby. So I had uh, four of these lovely oil things coming in. Uh, they just basically went straight to fuel, and then I took all these lovely polymer resin and just threw it in a resource sink. So I did not try to up any production on any one of these. And I went with the um, basically the solid straight line that split off on each one going across. I also put this little nice little wire on top going all the way to the other side so that the ones back here didn't burn too quickly and stuff like that. So this was just a nice little simple one and I kind of put it on this one so it's like a nice little oil rig and everything. And it's kind of cool. I put the little glass floors in there, all the little fancy stuff and all that kind of stuff. There was a lot of cool things that I tried to do with this, but this was like my first attempt. Now it's time for me to try another attempt. Let me see what cool things I can do with fuel generators with, um, how many months has this been out? With two months of experience, you know, building with the new stuff. Let me see if I can come up with something glorious. <laughs> Did it and it's glorious. Now, if only this cup of coffee was actually real and I could drink it. Because <laughs> I'm tired. Oh my god. Uh, I, I'm, I was actually surprised at how awesome this came out. So what I first did was I started with the uh, nice little, like, I'm going to call it a cell. All these four together. And I just basically put them back to back and realized that in a 5x5 five five area, this fits perfectly so five by five and then went out yeah and then i went out a little to get on the edge you know no problem so then i built it uh two more up and all that kind of stuff and then i put these pillars on the edges and i had them basically holding it up because i didn't want them to look like they were floating there and obviously there was not enough room for these things to be you know actually held there so once I did that, I just kind of like copied and pasted, and I was like, okay, I like this, and then copied and pasted down there, then copy pasted on there, and then I built this cool entrance way and everything over here. And then I'm like, well, where do I put the stuff to actually make it? Because this is going to need a lot of fuel to be made. Warning, warning, warning. And if I'm talking really fast, because I have a lot of energy drinks, and I'm literally like, oh, yeah. Anyway, so that being said, so um, I decided to build out all the stuff over here. And I actually used this nice little thing that I've used before here. So this is what I used before to do for the uh, turbo fuel, but without the turbo fuel and having to worry about the compact coal and everything, I was just going for the unpackaged fuel to basically, you know, hold them all. 
and only needed 1350 crude oil which is actually not that bad considering how many fuel generators this has actually i do have a calculator i can figure out right now yay so let's see there's four sets and that's times three so there's 12 per cell there's uh, two cells wide, so that's 24, and then five cell deep, that's 120, times both sides, which is two, so there's 240 fuel generators. And boy, doesn't it look like 240 fuel generators. Oh my god, this is so much. Oh, but I love the design of it. I did not go for my normal compact kind of stuff. I went big with this one. This thing's huge. Basically, it's like from this little island all the way back here to these uh, nice little train stations. <laughs> but anyway, so I used the uh, nice little thing that we had going on here before. So what ends up happening is the crude oil comes over here and gets divided up into these three things. All right, now the center one is at 175%, but these two little puppies over here, they're just at 100%. And this will take care of all five. Once I have them like hooked up here like this, each one goes into there, it goes down, and it goes into the middle. This system is the most compact and best thing you can ever do when wanting to do fuel or turbo fuel. See, what happens is this first one is packaged water. So water goes in here and empty canisters. Then it takes the packaged water and puts it in here and combines it with the lovely heavy oil residue to make alternate distilled packaged fuel. Then it goes over into this one and gets taken away and basically gives you fuel and an empty container. The empty container gets whipped around, brought around, and back into this first set where it's nice, neat, and compact. Now this is the way to go. Like a lot of people will they'll take out this step right here and they'll put this on a train where it's like packaged fuel getting sent everywhere, which is completely useless because you're better off having just like the pipes go over there or just hooking it up to a fuel thing for a train or something like that. But otherwise, got all that going on, then they go underneath and then they come out for each and every single one over there. So I got two sets and boy, does this look fun. Oh, uh, so yeah, I got the water coming in here. And then as you can see, the water goes from underneath, goes over, and gets put into these and split up into five and everything. Easy peasy. I even made a cool setup. So like, there's all the pipes for the, uh, yeah. Oh, you can tell I'm tired. <laughs> so there's all the pipes for the crude oil and everything like that. And then here is the setup for all the water. This looks so cool because they like all snake around. And then it goes underneath and that gets sent off to where the water needs to go. Now, I like going underneath and everything. It was so much easier. And then we got everything coming off the train over here for the nice da, 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 oil flow. Or as also known as Wolf Leo. Wolf Leo? Wolf Leo. So yeah, I never finished the train, but basically the train comes around here, loops around, comes back over here or the other way, depending on how it goes, how I feel. And then, like I said before, these things on the nice little tracks like that, oh, super clean, super neat. But look at this thing. Look at it. Oh my God, it looks glorious. It looks awesome. Oh, but it took forever. Big old pain in the butt. And then I got this little section over here where it all comes together and you can basically see where it all started. In the shredder. Is that what that is, shredder? Ah, <laughs> shredder. And then, of course, I got a nice little lizard doggo statue basically saying, you did a good job. I wish this was bigger. Look how small and tiny this guy is. He's nothing compared to this giant monument of greatness. Uh, but anyway, that being said, there is just one more thing to do. So let's get underway to our final step. Enough looking in the past. And let's look to the future. All right, ladies and gentlemen, the final step into our lovely project over here is nuclear power. Look at the size of this bad boy producing 2,500 megawatts of power, but consumes 300 meg... Oh, wait. 
m to the third ah yeah millimeters to the third a minute of water so that is a full line of water now the cool thing you can do with the water is you can put bump this up with 250 percent and then you'll have a one per one kind of thing the only problem is this is not very reliable to that what you can do though is if you go over here to the organization and you take one of these nice buffers you put the buffer in front of it and basically have it go but on the other side of the buffer you have three of these things basically converging into one for the other side of the buffer unfortunately i don't have any heavy modular frames to show you but anyway you have about three of these things which give you 360 which will actually run this thing perfectly. You won't have to worry about it stuttering because it'll give you all the water it needs. The only way that this thing actually stutters is when it uses up more water per minute than it needs. So like it needs 300 meters per, yeah, sorry, 300 millimeters to the third of water. So if it gets really close to that 2,500 megawatts of power, if that's all the power you're making, like your capacity is like pretty much right up there. If your consumption is close to your capacity, this thing will be running like at 100%, which is bad because your water tends to stutter because it's not perfect. So what you wanna do is you wanna have a like a backlog. So that 360 of having three of these water extractors works out very well. Other than that, you basically gotta figure out how to make da 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 nuclear fuel units also known as if you actually come down to here nuclear fuel rods i have an alternate recipe which i will be using later on and that's what this whole setup is over here now the nuclear fuel rod the regular recipe is actually easier to make but produces less product so this will take the uranium cell in case industrial beams and the elect electromagnetic control rod so the encased industrial beams very easy uh, electro control rod is actually this little thing over here so it goes to this you need one of these this this all this stuff over here <laughs> yeah uh, this one is actually not that bad this over here is the encased uranium things which is basically concrete and pellets pellets are basically made up by a refinery using uranium and sulfuric acid Sulfuric acid is basically made from, if I had chosen it, uh, just sulfur and water. So, you know, each one has their own little thing and you just basically have to go through it and work your way from the end all the way to the back. So the one reason I'm using the alternate recipe, uh, let's go back to selecting recipes. So the one reason I'm using this is because it produces at 0.6 per unit, but uses the same encased uranium cells. And the reason why I'm using this is because this uses uranium pellets at the same rate as that. And uranium pellets are made using uranium. Duh. But here's the thing. There's only a select amount of uranium on the entire planet. So if you want to make the, get the most bang for your buck or you know run the most amount of uh, these nuclear power plants, you're going to need as much uranium as you can get, but you're also going to have to make it last as long as it can. That's why I went with this whole big setup over here. Like this over here is making my beacons. This one right here is making crystal oscillators. And all this gets feeded feeded <laughs> gets fed into here where I got some crystal oscillators beacons electromagnetic control rods and the uranium cells but here's the key factor I want to let you guys know this produces at 0.6 parts per minute okay that means that this only produces uh, what do you guys say let's see 0.6 how many times can I tame that let's see 0.6 times 2 um, so that's gonna be a second so basically um, ooh, we need a better number. Three, no. Four, no. Five. Yeah, five. So you basically make um, three rods every five seconds. So basically, if you had five of these set up, you can make um, three of them every second. But here's the key thing. Here's the thing that most people don't know. This nuclear power plant burns one of those rods every five minutes at full capacity or full sorry full consumption so at full consumption this thing's going to burn one of those fuel rods every single 
five minutes, which means you have five minutes to make another one to replace it. And as you can see here, you can get through about three of them. So basically you could run three of these with one measly little manufacturer in the time it takes to do that. Whereas it'd be much different if you did the one that was 0.4 because unfortunately, if you do the regular recipe, uh, let's see, yeah, this produces at 0.4 parts per minute. So if we did that like we did that, so 0.4 times two, nope, uh, times three, nope. Let's just do times five. Okay, so that's basically two. So let's see here. So at five minutes, this is gonna produce you two of them, which is gonna run two of these for the five minutes for another one to be replaced. Whereas if you switched it to the other one that I'm using, it's gonna last three of them, see that? So, you know, that, that tends to help out a lot. But I was gonna build some huge big thing with the uh, nuclear power plant, but I'm actually gonna do that in my Let's Play episode. So I have this huge thing like already set up and everything like that. As you can see, I've already done all the work for it to make something really interesting. I'll actually be produce. I'll be taking every single thing of uranium off the map and making the biggest nuclear power plant I can possibly make. That is 27 nuclear fuel rods per minute. <laughs> yeah. So thank you all for joining me. I do appreciate it. You guys have been the best. This has been a wonderful fun. Uh, don't forget to join me in my uh, Let's Play videos coming out soon where I go and build a wonderful nuclear power plant if you want to see what I do with all those nuclear fuel rods. Uh, but other than that, this has been a blast. I do appreciate it. And if you're wondering what's going to happen to this world with all this power, <laughs> uh, oh, don't worry. It's going to be coming to you guys soon. Uh, just hold on and have a wonderful day. But other than that, have a good one and I'll see you later. Bye!